The rescue took hours. Toronto Fire getting the call about a woman stuck up on a crane hovering above Wellesley Street at 3.30 this morning. Toronto Fire Captain Rod Wa Rob Wanford making the dramatic save, rescuing the woman from a pulley dangling about 12 stories above the ground. She was then arrested and taken to hospital for observation. The police say she will be formally charged with six counts of public mischief and interfering with property and she will be appearing in a mental health court tomorrow. So it took one specially trained firefighter to pull off that rescue and there really couldn't have been a more steady hand to bring that woman down. Toronto Fire Captain Rob Ronfer is no stranger to heights and we actually found out today that he's also an arborist. And on top of that, he went through about 40 hours of special ropes training over the Special Operations Centre in North York and we got a tour of that facility earlier today. Well, it's a 40 hour course for technical rope rescue, which is only one of the many attributes. So a lot of the confined space, uh, water rescue, the elements really uh, connect each other. So it's using ropes, using carabiners, using, using pulleys and that type of equipment. It's also on a regular, every three months uh, we go through and, and use at least one day or two days to uh, set up scenarios, run through evolution using our equipment and making sure the guys are comfortable working at heights. So right behind us there is actually a crane similar to the one that was at the centerpiece of today's rescue. That's so correct. what kind of training do you do here involving a crane like that one? Well this as you can see is just a simulator. It's a short crane but it has all the elements that we find in the standard tower crane so for and, and as you can see around the city uh, there's uh, usually hundreds of these up uh, at any time a given time so it's a mostly how to do rescues for the operator uh, for the maintenance technicians if they're up there and obviously for uh, times when we have illegal uh, trespassers uh, uh, taking pictures which is something that seems to be happening more and more now if you were up there, would do, you, is, do any of your guys get a little nervous? That's what we train for. This is what we do. No, I, this is exactly why we come and train on this day after day so that when it comes time to do a rescue, it's actually something that is comfortable for us because we've done it. And that way we can also calm the patient down and let them know exactly what's going on. And coming up, we look at the tools that the fire captain used to bring the woman down safely, but also the tools he used to scale the crane. More on the tools of the trade coming up at 6. little scrum that was there with our firefighters as, as one of the senior captains walked away, he looked at me and he said, there isn't a textbook on that, but I think we just wrote it. And that's, uh, I couldn't agree more. That's, uh, that's something I've never seen that before in uh, certainly that complex in a as I've said many times, this is exactly why our women and men train like they do, and we're really fortunate to have that amount of training, and uh, I'm a pretty proud guy today. Now, after that amazing rescue, Toronto's fire chief said that that firefighter in that rescue, he rewrote the textbook on amazing high angle rescues, and he mentioned specifically the training that his men and women go through. And every year, 200 firefighters get put through 40 hours of specialized rope training at the Specialized op or Special Operations Centre in North York. Now, earlier today, I got a look at the training, the tools, and the very harness that they use to pull the woman to safety. These are the lanyards that you, he used to climb up the structure. So any erected structures that, that do not have a built-in ladder or, uh, or cage to facilitate the operator going up and down, which is what happened today on the, uh, the jib boom, uh, he was able to use these lanyards and that uh, creates a fall prevention and fall protection. So as he's climbing, there's always one contact, not only uh, with his hands and feet, but also with one of these hooks. We carry extra carabiners, prussics, pulleys, because once you get up there, your, your plan may change. This is uh, the rescue harness that we use. And you and use today. That's exactly what the, this is the one that they use today, actually. <laughs> this is just from our truck. So if I was the victim, the firefighter instructor to put her arms in through just Yeah, like so that. I would, that's exactly it. So you put your arms through. But I imagine, so we, what we just did, we're safely two feet firmly on the ground. How difficult will it be putting on this when you're hundreds of feet in the air on a moving 
base. Exactly. Well, the the big thing is also how are, is our patient uh, reacting to uh, this operation. Uh, to, uh, today, from what I saw on TV, she was quite calm, so he was able to put it on and she didn't move very much. But it's all about keeping your patient stable so that they don't move and working it around her so that when you finally have the system hooked up and that is hooked up to the rescuer and to the, the main line system, uh, then she's secured and able to uh, to be able to lower. You have a grown adult woman. How how do you go about attach attaching her to someone like him on a very small little platform? So by putting this on the rope here, he's able to make sure that you're attached to the same system as he is. So when he's being lowered, you're also going to be lowered, and this is how we would attach to your system here. So the same thing as we put a, a carabiner. We want to load it. So that's how he was attached. And obviously, he made a, a patient contact and made sure that they were holding on. And she was holding on for dear life also. Now, as we told you, the young woman will be making appearance in mental health court tomorrow morning. And she's facing six charges, including mischief and interfering with property.